once again and welcome to another lesson based on your O-Level English syllabus. In this lesson, you will be introduced to the difference between should and must. You will learn about when you can use these words and even gain confidence to use them in your sentences too. So let's get straight to it. The words should and must are modal auxiliary verbs or simply modals. This means that they provide information about the function of the main verb that follows them. Let's look at the revision point in Unit 2 of your pupil's book. Turn to page 19. Let's look at the examples they have given. The examples given are, you should take up this challenge and you must obey the law. Both should and must are highlighted in bold. Both these modal verbs provide more information to the main verb. In the first sentence, the verb should strengthens the verb take up and makes this request have more emphasis. If you have noticed, by using should, there is an advisory tone that is enforced. The next sentence, you must obey the law, well, this sentence is also advisory and must is used to add more weight to the verb obey. Let's learn more about these modal verbs. Should is the past tense of shall and is used to present recommendations, advice and is used to show what is generally considered to be accepted behaviour. I could say, you should wear a mask when you go out these days or you should wake up early every morning or you should limit the hours you spend online. This shows that should could be used to talk about what is generally considered to be right or wrong with the limits, norms of the society. Let's look at how we can use negative in a sentence with should. You should not treat your books like that. You should not drink too much of fizzy drinks. You should not sit in one place for too long. Once again, through this negative construction, I am able to adopt an advisory tone. And in each sentence that we just examined, there is either a probability or a recommendation of some kind. So when you use should, you will be recommending a mode of action like, you should wear your mask when you go out. And whether the listener does it or not is probable. Must is somewhat different to should though both have an advisory undertone. Must is used when talking about an obligation or a necessity. We use this modal verb alongside another verb to emphasize that something has to happen. It is used when people are compelled to do something. For instance, let's look at the example given in your pupil's book. You must obey the law. This sentence compels us to abide by the law or we will have to face the punishment enforced by the law. You would notice that unlike using should, which is more of a recommendation, using must in a sentence makes the phrases stronger and more forceful. The sentence immediately becomes more of a command. In the sentence, you must clean your room regularly, here it is imperative or majorly important that you clean your room regularly. It is very much an obligation and a necessity. Let's look at another example. You must hurry if you have to catch the train. In this sentence, we are strongly advised that we have to move quickly if we are to catch the train to Colombo. The advice is firm and presented forcefully. Sometimes we too can use must when reflecting on the things that we have to do. For instance, what advice would you give yourself if you, let's say, fail an exam? You might say, I must work harder and I must stop getting distracted in class. I must read more and be more disciplined when I study. By using must to present your own thoughts, 
it certainly shows that you have made up your mind and it expresses your resilience. So the main difference between the two words should and must is that must is a stronger word. Now that you have a brief idea about when to use the modal verbs should and must, let's look at some exercises. Turn to page 20 in your pupil's book, Unit 2, Activity 9. Complete the blanks using should, shouldn't, must and mustn't. Let's do it together. You must brush your teeth before you go to bed at night. The children shouldn't play too much when they have to do homework. You mustn't cross the road when the traffic lights are red. The parents shouldn't allow children to do risky things. You must always speak the truth. If you noticed, in the sentences where must was used, the ideas that are presented are done so more strongly. You can almost imagine the firm tone. You must brush your teeth before you go to bed at night. You mustn't cross the road when the traffic lights are red. You must always speak the truth. These few sentences show what has to be done. The sentences where should or shouldn't has been used are mere recommendations. The children shouldn't play too much when they have to do homework and the parents shouldn't allow children to do risky things. Both those sentences are recommendations to parents on how to bring up their kids. Look at activity 10 on page 20. You are presented with six signs and you are asked to describe them using should or shouldn't. Let's do it together. The first sign is of an umbrella protecting the ground beneath from the rain. It's a sign used to explain to people that they must keep the area concerned or an item dry. So you can say the bench should be kept dry at all times. Let's look at the second sign. It states to handle with care. So you can say that box should go with all the packed glassware. We are asked to handle it with care. <laughs> sign C is usually placed on boxes that have to be carried in a particular manner. You can say, be careful about how you plan to carry this box. It shouldn't be held from this side. Sign D I am sure you would have seen around in public places. The wording under the sign says, litter in the bin. So you can say, you shouldn't litter the place. Be sure to put all your garbage into the bin over there. Sign E is also similar to the handle with care sign. It states that whatever it is that is packed is fragile and should be moved around or lifted carefully. You should be careful with this package. It's a coffee set for the newly wedded couple. The final sign given states in red not to drop. So clearly this too holds something fragile. Shanti has to get help to carry this box. It has some very fragile things inside and she shouldn't drop it. Now that you have a general idea of when you can use should and must, attempt forming sentences when you speak at home or among friends. I am sure you must be hearing a lot of these two models when your teachers and parents advise you about what to do. You must do your homework. You should read more. You shouldn't have left the kitchen without cleaning the pan and so on. And that ends today's lesson on should and must. If you would like to watch more lessons like the one you just watched, please subscribe to our channel. Goodbye.